from tarotcallyspeaking.com where I blog about the things that I've learned from and about the tarot cards. I also review tarot decks, books and I make these tarot videos for you so you can enjoy these decks and books as I review them. And I also do tarot readings and mentor students who are interested in learning uh, tarot and perfecting their reading skills. So if you're interested in any of that, the links are in the description below the video. But now, so let's, so, <laughs> with all that said, let's, let's clearly, you, you know what I'm doing this today in this video. I am going to be reviewing this lovely deck, the Manga Tarot. Now, if you have been following me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you know that the card a day readings that I have been doing this month are with this lovely deck and there there are a few things about this deck which are a little different from the norm you could have you might have guessed from the image on the carton but you know we'll, we'll get into it and I really really want to showcase this deck because personally I'm a really big fan of manga the the way of you know drawing uh, you know, manga in Japanese, I believe, is it, it talks about these comic books with a very specific uh, drawing style. And uh, I believe they have used the Japanese culture as a backdrop for these drawings, uh, you know, on, on in this deck. So I think that's really lovely. And I love the artwork. Let me say that up front. I absolutely love the artwork of this deck. I'm, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm personally a very big fan of manga. And so, I mean, buying this deck as soon as I saw it was kind of a no-brainer for me. So, here we go. Uh, this deck, um, as you can see, has been published by Los Carabio. And the deck creators are Ricardo Minetti and Anna Lazzarini, right? Um, it, it is a pretty standard box and deck size, so it's nothing special there. Uh, let's let's just get right into it. I'm gonna pull out the cards, and of course, there's a little white book. Um, there is no special book that comes along with like along with this deck. Not a separate special book that comes along with this deck. But we do have an LWB or what they call the little white book because it's little and white. <laughs> and let me put this aside for a bit. If, as you can see, uh, it offers uh, meanings of the cards in various languages. You have English, Italian, uh, Spanish, French and German. And so I'm just going to go through the English uh, stuff. It's about... From page 3 to page 14, I would say about 11 odd pages, right? So, and it's, 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 it's worth reading through, okay? Because there's a lot about this deck that is uh, a little bit different from the norm. And I do want to discuss it. I do genuinely want to discuss it. So, uh, I don't know if I should be doing this before I show you the cards or after I show you the cards. But there's some... Uh, things maybe I I I, I want to talk about this and I and you know you've seen I've highlighted a bunch of stuff here, so it, I think it makes sense to talk about it after I've shown you the cards. That's what I'm sensing. So I'm gonna put this book aside. I'm gonna come back to it at the end of the uh, you know show and tell <laughs> of the of the cards. Uh, okay, now the deck comes with these two extra cards. Which I like to call the front and back card. This just, you know, it's random. Uh, but but they kind of serve as as bookends in in a way. So I like it. And of course, you can feast your eyes on the gorgeous card back, which is reversible. Uh, unless you notice the yin and yang symbol right there, and you say, "Oh, upright, oh, reverse." But then when you're making a fan, the center part of the card is not always visible. So, you know, that is the good part that it will not really take away unless you're really looking for this, uh, you know, the, the whether it's upright or reverse. But otherwise, with you know, it's, it's, it's practically reversible, which is something I genuinely appreciate uh, when, you know, when... When, when I have tarot decks and, and their backs are reversible because I like to read with reverse cards, right? So 
makes my job easier when the, when it's not easily distinguishable which card is upright, which card is reversed. Okay, so first and foremost, let's let's begin. I think I think what I'll be doing here, I think it makes sense because, like I said, there is stuff from the book that I want to talk about, and maybe what I'll be doing is I'll be crisscrossing and overlapping. Okay, because it's inevitable. Because as we go along, hang on. Yeah, as we go along, you will notice that this de this deck is a little bit different and not just because of its theme or its artwork style, but because it depicts straight up, right? The characters which on your traditional deck are masculine or masculine, sorry, bad pronunciation, whatever, masculine characters or male characters are depicted as female characters in this deck. And vice versa so the female characters are depicted as male so and and so therefore certain cards the positions are switched up okay so you, you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about uh, so here is your full card right and you see naturally there's a woman there's a dog there's the cliff edge and all of that and I like how it's all shades of gray right it's 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 very interesting uh, because it means, you know, it's not necessarily and, and only these flowers are colored. See, it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's something worth noting because, again, the coloring is also, uh, a, a, you know, it plays a role in this deck, the color scheme or the dominant color, as they like to say in the in the book. OK, so this is the full card. And look, and if you look closely, she's holding her hands to her face so she doesn't see <clears throat> excuse me she can't see or she won't see or she doesn't want to see where she's going that's interesting isn't it all right then of course like i said the positions are naturally switched up because here you would expect to see the magician card but now you see the card called the sorceress let me hold this up a little bit right so we have a female magician, right? The sorceress. And uh, naturally, so we have the next one instead of the high priestess, this one becomes the high priest. So let, let's come back to here, okay? Because the magician, instead of being a male, is a female, okay? And you see these colors, there are dominant colors here. Now, now that's kind of important. And you see a symbol here. This is, is the Japanese symbol. And this is something that will feature prominently in most cards, right? A, a presence or even an absence, because in the full card, there is no symbol. The presence or absence of these symbols is interesting. Um, right at the outset of the book, we see what those symbols are. They're spring summer autumn and winter now again it's those of us who don't know japanese which is pretty much most of us <laughs> uh you know we, we will find it very it'll, it'll be tough to remember which symbol is which so i have found i mean there's a little technique i work with because visually right uh the japanese language is supposed to be very visual in that sense so what I like to look at is look at the shape of these uh, uh, the characters here and connect that somehow with the season because that's what it is spring, summer, autumn and winter. So if, if you find a way to connect that shape with that season and make that association in your head, then it becomes a little bit easy. So with spring, I like to say, okay, you know, this is the bottom part is the ground and maybe a flower is coming out of it, right? And in the summer, this 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 looks like the sun uh, up in the sky in, in a certain way. It's like up there, hot summer. In autumn, again, the leaves are falling. So that's why we see this falling leaf on the side. And in winter, oops, sorry about the loss of focus on my camera. Winter, of course, we see, you know, those two dots underneath the X or whatever. It's kind of, you know, stuff is going underground, so it's winter. I mean, that's how I've, uh, you know, learned the associations, but uh, <laughs> you can play around your style. And again, like, uh, as it says in the book, there is a dominant uh, color for each card. And they have gone with blue for swords or air or intellect. Green for pentacles, earth or nature. Red for wands, 
fire personality and yellow for chalices or water or feelings personally i feel they could have switched up the air and water thing because you know uh, that's what i feel because blue is more for water i think but you know this is what uh, they've done okay and as they explain these uh, these glyphs these symbols here they say that each glyph indicates a season right and they refer to the temporal and cyclic elements of the cards so spring can talk about birth beginnings sunrise adolescence summer is growth culmination noon maturity autumn is decline stagnation sunset and old age and winter is death minimum night silence so you know the, what what they are trying to say is look at you know look at the color the dominant color of the particular card so in this case we see oh there's a lot of reds here then look at the symbol this this looks like the symbol for spring it is <laughs> i'm just double checking it looks like so there is uh, so we can say red is all about wands and fire and passion and all of that and then it's spring which is the beginning so uh, you can say this is the beginning of something really passionate right just looking at the colors and then of course we look at what else is there we look at the card picture look at the card image and then we kind of get into the story of it but instead of so therefore again like i said bringing back coming back to the full card the lack of color here is is something important right it, it, it there is there are all these shades of gray and then there's these red flowers which is you know there is passion there is something you know burning or or, or you know and she, as she walks the flowers bloom it's, it kind of looks that way isn't it so this is this is fire this is passion this is something that you know as she's creating it as she goes she's bringing color to this gray landscape as it were as as she dreams as you know it's a full card so things you know as she dreams as she imagines as she visualizes and as she walks that path not knowing where it leads she with every step of the way is creating this passion or creating giving life giving color to this image as she walks along so i, I like how that image kind of once we get the uh you know the whole funda behind the uh you know the symbols and and stuff and you know we we it really makes starts to make sense but that's why i said reading that lwb is this kind of essential understanding why certain things are the way that they are in this deck is important okay and yeah so as we as we go into the cards the first one being the sorceress instead of the magician so now again let me come back to the second page uh there's more but we'll get to it when we get to it okay uh they have said over here that uh, you know the traditional iconography was inverted in this deck uh so they have represented uh you know cards that traditionally appear as men are shown as women and vice versa and so naturally this will show up in the court card also and so the placement of the court card changes so they have instead the queen changes place with the king and the knight becomes the princess and the knave becomes the prince right because otherwise you would see decks which are princess prince queen king but here we have the order is uh, you know changed up swapped up and so we have prince princess king and queen okay we'll see that when it comes to the court cards but in the major arcana that is kind of more uh you know very much something that that you need to kind of pay attention to because i have my <laughs> uh you know i have my thoughts on this which i'm sure i will share when we go as we go along so coming back here we have the sorceress in place of the magician and so, so uh, i know that you know traditionally when we start looking at the cards we looking at this is you know this is kind of based on the rider weight imagery to a point uh but then we look at we expect the magician we see the sorceress right one 
the number because you know numerology is also part of the story when we're looking at tarot one talks about someone who is who's kind of you know very much you know he's gonna go out there you know make something happen a leader a doer an action taker ambition that kind of a thing that's the energy of a one and instead of um, therefore one typically and i'm and i'm not being gender biased here i'm just saying that typically that's how it's depicted in the cards that is a very masculine energy but now we here see a feminine energy so it's it's interesting right to see that kind of turn on its head to see what is traditionally represented as a masculine energy is now shown as the feminine energy here and so uh, it it takes a little you know bending of one's mind if if one is really deeply rooted into uh you know the 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 energy of each card so to speak and and you expect something and then you say huh so it's kind of you know it takes it took me by surprise the first time i opened the deck and and, and went through it because i hadn't really seen i just google image searched the uh, the images and i'm like okay this looks cool i'm going to order it and then i got the deck and i was like huh this is different right and it took me a, a a couple of moments to kind of adjust to it and and kind of grasp the deeper implications now traditionalists may not appreciate this they'll be like hey this is breaking the rules okay but uh keep an open mind maybe you'll learn something you know that's how i see it so we have the sorceress so now second major arcana we expect to see the high priestess we find the priest or the high priest whatever you want to call it. it's called the priest though so we see a priest receiving his kind of you know priestly vestments or robes he's being you know he's given his job like that so again the high priestess traditionally right the meaning of the high priestess is she's going inwards again the energy of the two is going inwards uh and and kind of you know waiting contemplating intuiting things and now that becomes a very masculine function over here which is very very interesting okay and again see the symbol this is you know there's a prominence of of maybe blues here or greens here i can't really make out which <coughs> or even yellow for that matter excuse me for the coughing and this is the symbol i believe for autumn right the falling leaf there let me double check yep it is autumn tada see it helps to have some kind of association spend some time with it okay you'll you'll figure it out it's not that bad so they're talking about something that is uh, ultimately you know autumn being all about stagnation about sunset about you know the, you know there's that whole going back into the uh you know the cycle kind of wrapping up in terms of the earth cycle right then card number 3 we expect to see the empress but we find the emperor this is again pretty interesting because 3 is the number very numerologically uh, associated with creation uh, and you know giving birth in that way and instead of a female figure we find a male figure so that's pretty intense in a certain way um <laughs> something to ponder about and oh yeah this is the this is the guy from the card back right that's pretty interesting there then of course card number 4 is the empress thing around now i like how they've shown the empress with you know in in who she's this one is more she's ready to go fighting right symbol here is of summer and Yes, this one too. I think is summer, isn't it? Yes. Yep. So both emperor and empress both have summer, but this one is more red. This one is more green. Do you see that? It's pretty interesting. And of course, on this on the shield, we have the swan with her baby swans. <laughs> Very nice. then finally we come to the high priestess or the priestess again autumn there which is pretty cool because so this guy is an autumn too right and we see the moon so they've 
kept the basic I you know symbolism intact they've just switched things up which is pretty interesting so now the priestess plays a different role slightly uh, you know she she I don't know if you want to associate uh, the card with the number and the role that it traditionally plays or you just want to go with the imagery you know that 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 is where I think there will be a little bit of conflict especially for the traditionalists who will say oh this is card number major kind of five and it represents something 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 uh, you know it represents change it represents uh, you know kind of you know the, the society and all of that and then boom we find the high priestess image and you're like um okay this card is not what 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 it's talking about so I suggest that ignore this ignore the numbers ignore all of that just look at the cards and go with that but I look at the image and and make that story that that's easier by far because the image does take up a major portion of the card so I would suggest if you're going to be working with this deck kind of forget the traditional uh, rider weight or thought uh, kind of you know basis that you have for the structure which I know is is, is asking a lot <laughs> but I want you to do that if you're going to be working with this deck it, it makes life easier that's what I found as I've been playing with this deck all month long so far okay it just just makes it easier makes it simpler okay of course lovers still lovers male and female and this is your spring chariot Summer again, a lot of blues, I guess. Which is which is interesting that it sh that shows a lot of blues here, which is, uh, you know, air, but where traditionally chariot is associated with the sign of water. So, go figure. Because again, we have instead of the two horses, we have two men carrying him. And he's holding a sword up in the sky there. So this is this. This, of course, the. Do you see this? That sphinx like creature there. Interesting, no? Okay. Then, yeah, this again, card number eight is justice, not strength. So, just so you know, <laughs> this is again winter. Justice is cold, hmm? and you know this. This reminds me of you know, like if if you have watched any uh, sword fight movies or or you know Chinese or Japanese or you know Oriental Asian movies, uh, you know where where sword fighting is kind of by you know kings and queens and all that. This is a very traditional, typical you know scene that you'll see if someone's fighting and the sword comes up to the forehead and this guy just like. A, put his hand out and hold it right before it hits him <laughs> it's very very cool i like it ah home it again becomes a woman i like nobody's complaining again this is autumn and instead of i think being on top of a snow clad cliff uh, she's she's kind of surrounded by this rocky kind of space with beams of maybe moonlight coming in at her from various angles. It's very interesting. Now, there are some cards which have all the symbols like you see in the Wheel of Fortune. And then there are some cards which have no symbols like you've seen in the Fool card. None of that uh, season symbols are there. So Wheel of Fortune, because it's showing, you know, how the whole year round you know everything is changing so we see all the four seasons here and we see a couple it's pretty interesting this is a very different wheel of fortune compared to what you may have seen before in other cards or the decks right i like it then of course card number 11 is strength and again we have autumn here and prevalence of yellows and blues and this guy is wrestling a dragon 
So instead of a woman kind of taming or wrestling with a, with a lion, we have a young man wrestling with a dragon. So that's cool. Right? <laughs> Again, hanged man is a hanged woman now. And she's kind of doing a handstand in the middle of a waterfall. Which is pretty sexy if you ask me. <laughs> pretty cool. I like it. Again, autumn. So, it's nice. I mean, if she were to go and do this in the month of autumn, this water being, you know, becoming colder and stuff, that's, man, that's something, huh? Card number 13 is death. It's a very different imagery again, winter here. But then you have all these reds, you know, reds all about fire and passion, right? It's interesting, right? The whole juxtaposition of, of these elemental energies versus the seasonal energies. That is something uh, that, 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 you know, gives you pause, gives you a moment to like, yeah, think about it. <laughs> what are they trying to say here? And then card number 14 is temperance featuring again a, a man. Uh, so, hmm. Because the traditional Rider Waite card has the angel. So again, angels, I don't know if there was a gender ascribed to that. And of course, we have spring here. Ah, the devil. And we have autumn. This is a very manga devil here. So pretty interesting. The tower. This is winter, eh? notice. But then you have all this yellows here. And yellow, as we know, is all about feelings, right? Because this is, again, interesting. Because traditionally, the tower card is associated with Mars, which is a fire planet. Just saying. <laughs> here we have complete opposite, which is water. I think this is on purpose, right? They have switched everything up, so they switched this up too, I think. That's what they have done. The stars, again, a young man. Very kind of, you know, spring there, but uh, it's a very interesting young man walking around. <laughs> With the star on his forehead there. The moon with you know so we have a lady and all these swans and the bear but let me see what the book has to say about this it's pretty interesting it's a very different imagery from doesn't say anything specific like it doesn't give you any now this is this is the thing see now the moon harmony dreams thoughts imagination intuitive understanding perception of things going beyond appearances illusion magical moment fleeting sensations harmony in giving and receiving so you know like now this is very different imagery it's not even the male female being swapped around right this is imagery which is very different so is there is there a legend or a myth or something that prompted them to have this imagery the book doesn't explain it. Ah, you know, that, that's kind of disheartening, really. Well, of course, it's spring, which is interesting again. But if you were to, let's say, forget about, you know, forget if there's a legend or whatever, and just look at the imagery and say, okay, bear is a mama bear, hibernation, and, and you know, Bear could be someone like I know the in the Lenormand the bear represents someone who is a bully or a strong person or a big person. Bear could also represent savings, so it's all of that. And then of course there's the lady here surrounded by all these swans, and there's the crescent moon up there. So you know if if you want you can just play around with the symbolism and and maybe figure out your own meanings there. 
So or she's dancing with the bear. You could just, you know, say Beauty and the Beast or something. I don't know. <laughs> just you, you can, you can. I, I don't know if, if the absence of information means that you can use your imagination and come up with the card story. I'd say go for it. Give it a shot. Why not? Hmm. Or if there is a very specific legend to go with this, and if you guys know what it is, please post the link in the comment section below or, or write about it, whatever. I, I would love to hear about this. I, I would love to know, okay? Hey, so the sun again, they have a guy on it. Well, they should have shown a girl, right? <laughs> and it's summer, thank God. Mm, moon or spring that's interesting okay and judgment it's winter and the world card again summer okay now notice they have also mentioned again uh, the aces will have all the four seasons, okay, and tens will contain only three glyphs, so pay attention to the missing glyph, that's what they say in the book, right, okay, on, on this page, so this is, this is interesting, okay, so we have your ace of wands, all the four glyphs spring summer autumn and winter two of wands check it out i like how instead of your uh globe there's a heart in her hand let me let me pull it up okay she's got a heart in her hand there's all these butterflies and i love love the butterfly imagery on her kimono oh it's beautiful it's Simply beautiful, breathtaking. God, I love the artwork. <laughs> I absolutely adore it. Whatever things about this deck, you know, that that, that bug me, I, I look at the artwork and I just, you know, it, it just goes away. <laughs> All right. Now, so this is interesting to see that there are some interesting patterns. We have spring here. We have summer for the three, autumn for the four of wands. Oh, look at that. Sensuous and amazing, breathtaking, stunning. Love the artwork. Love it. And then winter for the five. And again, spring for the six of wands, summer for the seven of wands. Now it's very easy to confuse this with swords, but it's a wands card, babe. Just, just see that. All these swords coming at her, yeah. Autumn for the eight of wands. And winter for the nine of wands. So it's like spring, summer, autumn, winter, spring, summer, autumn, winter. You know, they've done that. And then on the 10, which is the missing symbol, this is summer, this is spring, and this is winter. So autumn is missing. Right? So that's something, you know, think about it. What's the story there? What, what does that mean? kind of mean when a symbol is missing right because autumn talks about as as we've seen decline stagnation sunset and old age so that is missing from this picture everything else is happening so there is new birth or new something going on summer brings in uh you know growth and and, and maturity and winter also brings in uh, that kind of you know the the closure so to speak but there is no in between stage between summer and winter the decline is not there okay it's pretty interesting <laughs> if you ask me 
So all in all, there's there's a lot of growth going on. The winter is there, but spring, summer is there's more, you know, growth than decline in this card. Ten of Wands. Okay. Now, remember the court cards we said. Again, that is also switched up. And so we see first instead of the page uh, or or the traditional or if you if you're into the thought system the princess, uh, you know we see prince of wands. And we see again here we have autumn. Yeah. Then the princess of wands. And we have winter there interesting the king of wands with spring <laughs> it's pretty interesting he's got a mirror in his hand hmm? so he shows you that mirror hmm. it's pretty cool and then the queen of wands is all summer she's all warmth right so she's got fire from her hands coming up there interesting I like this card, of course, but <laughs> okay. Now, the suit of swords, right? So again, you have spring, summer, autumn, and winter, and then the sword and all these blues. Very nice. I think I believe it's called a katana. Who has not watched Kill Bill? <laughs> All right, so two of swords. So again, instead of a girl, there's a guy and he's got two swords in his hand. And a blindfold also. And see how this background, it kind of is a background or is it a doorway? Think about it. And now see, this one starts with uh, autumn. Let, let's backtrack a little. Let's go back to your wands. Here, the suit of wands, the two of wands rather, because all the ace has all the four seasons. Here, this one started with spring and went on like that. This one, the suit of air or suit of swords, is the whole starting point, which is the two, is starting with autumn. Okay? And so three of swords is winter. Gosh, I love this imagery. And four of swords is now spring. And five of swords is summer. Is it interesting or what? So again, six of swords is autumn, a letting go. Yeah, he's letting go. Look at me. He's letting go of the swords. <laughs> Seven of swords is winter. She's making the best of her situation, taking advantage of it because, you know, it's cold. It's the only way you have, you have to survive. Then the eight of swords is spring. So there is still hope. You see that? Like eight of swords typically is your, you know, woman who is surrounded by swords and, and her hands and feet are tied or hand or whatever by, you know, faces. So sorry, she's blindfolded and her hands are tied. And now here this guy's hands and feet are tied, but he's not blindfolded. There's eight of swords. He's standing at the edge of the cliff, but it is all about spring. So there is hope maybe they, that he will find a way to break free of those bonds. His eyes are open. Yeah. So he knows what's going on. It's pretty interesting there. <clears throat> Summer, we have nine of swords. It's all these, these are his inner demons and his inner ghosts coming at him. My God. Okay. And then, ten of swords again, we have, what are the symbols? We have summer, we have winter, and we have autumn. So there is no spring here. Did you notice? Ten of Swords, we don't have spring. There is spring is all about hope, yeah. But now there is none of that. 
can see all the ten swords. Is this her own portrait? That she stuck all the swords in? My goodness. This is a story here, okay? If you're going to sit with this image, there's a lot to think about. A lot of stories come out of this picture. Hmm. Huh. My imagination is going wild even as I look at it. <laughs> okay. Now, the Prince of Swords or the Page of Swords in that way, in that sense. We have winter here. Spring for the Princess of Swords. And look at her, she's riding a hail. A veil? Veil? Veil. <laughs> King of Swords. Nice. Summer. And Queen of Swords. Autumn. All these blues. Oh boy. Mm. And we have now the Suit of Cups. So all four seasons. Spring, Summer, Autumn, Winter. And this beautiful beautiful cup and of course the suit of water has to you know according to the book it's all about yellows so that's the color here <clears throat> now this one right begins with summer so let's kind of backtrack a little bit uh, the suit of wands where is it begins with spring this one then your suit of swords begins with autumn. Then your suit of cups, the two of cups, we have spring. And I bet you the suit of, so we got what, spring? Yeah, that's spring, right? Man, I'm getting forgetful. Okay, yeah, that is spring. Then this is autumn. This is summer. So I guess pentacles will be winter. And do you know that this is kind of the traditional association of the seasons with the suits as well? So, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I definitely remember pentacles being associated with winter. So that's interesting. So here we go. Two of cups. Three of cups. Autumn. And again, we have three guys, not three women. Hmm. Four of Cups, Winter, and a woman there instead of a guy. Five of Cups, Spring. It's interesting it's showing it's Spring. <laughs> like hope. Is there hope? There is hope. Mm -hmm. Six of Cups, Summer. Like the summer of 69. You know, thinking, flashbacking to the old, good old days. <laughs> then seven of cups, autumn. This dragon also. I love dragons. Eight of cups is winter. Nice. I like it. it kind of matches, right? He's walking away. <clears throat> and Nine of Cups is spring. Oh, look, new baby. This is an interesting imagery here. And Ten of Cups is summer again. Oh, wait, no. It's <laughs> spring, summer, and autumn. No winter here. Hmm? Interesting. Prince is summer. Prince of Cups. Again, wait, hang on. I'm, I'm going to backtrack a little again. I know, I'm sorry. Just... Oh no, this, this one also begins differently. Autumn, winter, spring, summer. And so the swords courts we have winter, uh, spring, summer, autumn. And so now the cups begins with summer. Again, I think that's the 
first, uh, you know, the energy of that suit. That's the season of that suit. That's where it begins. Summer, right? Remember, Two of Cups was also that. Uh, same season. Princess of Cups. Autumn. And she's riding a water dragon, is it? I like her. She's cute. I like the dragon too. He's cute too. <laughs> King of Cups. That's winter. And the Queen of Cups. Spring. Hmm. Are they underwater by any chance? It looks that way, no? Like they were underwater and these are just bubbles. Hmm. And finally, we come to the suit of pentacles. We have again the four seasons on the ace, spring, summer, autumn, winter. <clears throat> Two of pentacles, this begins with winter. Ah, see, this is the season of this, season associated with this particular deck. So then three of pentacles is spring. Four of Pentacles is summer. See the prevalence of green in this suit, yeah? Five of Pentacles is autumn. Six of Pentacles is winter. This is interesting. Pentacles are a little different in this one compared to the previous ones, right? Do you see that? Do you notice that? <laughs> then we have the Seven of Pentacles, which is spring. Eight of Pentacles, summer. Body painting. Hmm. Nine of Pentacles, Autumn. And instead of your traditional female figure, of course, we see a male figure with the eagle or, or kite and all the grapes and <laughs> interesting. And finally, the Ten of Pentacles. And here we have Spring, Autumn and Winter and no Summer. Hmm? Summer is all about growth, culmination, noon, maturity, and that is absent. And it's pretty interesting to see that in the Ten of Pentacles, that is the absent energy. Or maybe it's present in the imagery. Think about it. I want you to spend some time with the Tens. If you have this deck or if you buy this deck, spend some time with, time with the Tens and see what that absence of that season uh, ultimately, you know, look at the imagery and what the absence of that season really kind of tells you here. This is something you can totally think and journal about. <laughs> this here, right here, is, is what they have. They're getting married. That's that's the Ten of Pentacles. Very different meaning because typically Ten of Pentacles is that they already are married, right? So then we come to your. Prince of Pentacles and he's spring. Hmm. Princess of Pentacles is summer. King of Pentacles is autumn. Queen of Pentacles is winter. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, so <laughs> this is your manga tarot deck. And yeah, let's take a quick look at the book as I promised before. I mean, we have crisscrossed looked at it, no doubt about it. But just if there's something I missed out on, uh, let's see. Now, the color, dominant color, we talked about that. We talked about the seasons. We talked about how certain cards either don't have or have all the... 
uh, seasons in the glyphs and, and some cards have one, they're missing. And we talked about how the male and female is swapped up. Yeah, and then, of course, pay attention. We have in this book, like like we looked at the moon card, right? It doesn't explain why, why the imagery is a certain way. So that is something, again, you will need to... I think it in a it you know in a it's it's kind of good and bad. There's plus and minus to it. Like like we saw in the moon card uh, earlier that I you know if you don't know if there's a certain myth or legend associated with the imagery and if it was then we would like to have known it. Uh, but in the absence of that information, you can just you know say okay this symbol means this and you can make up your own story or it invites you to do your own independent research if you're that keen so uh you know like i said there's pros and cons to having more and, and enough information but uh i would have loved to have known what the uh deck creators had in mind when they chose that specific imagery because it kind of show gives me a, a, an insight into what their thought process was you know and it helps me of course because you don't want to deviate from what they kind of were aiming to shoot for <laughs> when they were creating the deck. I mean, you want to remain true to that. Uh, that's kind of what I would I, I would like to have done. But anyway, this is the uh, meanings. They don't give your keyword. I mean, there are these are there are a bunch of keywords there and there is a statement and there is, uh, you know, something about each card, like like a, a name or something for each card, you know. Uh, but they don't give reverse meanings. Bear that in mind. So you'll have to figure those out if you work with reverse cards. So cups, pentacles, wands, and swords. Okay. After that, after all of this, uh, they do talk about the uh, spread which is shown in the, in the right in the beginning. Okay. They do talk about what that spread is all about. Then they also talk about how you can use these cards as a, uh, you know, for small rituals of meditation. So, and, and they have given an, even an example inspired by the Japanese New Year that you can choose a card that represents something that you don't like about yourself. Then choose another card. Uh... You know, so, so choose that card, place it aside, and then after shuffling the deck, choose another card. By dwelling on its meaning, you can receive advice on how to improve yourself. So specifically about the thing that you don't like about yourself. So you want to improve it, uh, you shuffle the rest of the deck, and you get the pull one card and you get guidance for what you can do. So it's like every year there's, there's a goal, what you can improve about yourself. Okay. And then, uh, you know, the... As you as you study this deck further, they've given some advanced techniques uh, for your spreads and meditations. So you you want to see you know they talk about prevalence when you see in a spread that there are cards of you know a lot of cards of a particular color. Then what does that bring? Uh, you know what what does that add into the uh, the reading? Similarly, absence right even with the seasons as we saw seen in in the cards before are. Sometimes even the absence of a particular color or season, you know, that that can, again, shed some light. And then, of course, when you have a tie, when you have a balance between all you know, the, the colors in this in the spread. So that is something they want you to kind of you know pay attention to as time goes by. And then they have a little write up about how you can study the deck. And of course, finally, there's a there's a short sort of bio of the author's. We have Anna Lazzarini, who is well known in the world of Italian comics. She's passionate about manga, drawing and art. And she has made an essential contribution to the creation of this deck through her inventiveness and imagination. Yes, ma'am. Yes, definitely. Full marks. <laughs> lovely, lovely, stunning, amazing artwork. Okay. Then Riccardo Minetti is the author of the Trucian Tarot, the Fate Tarot, and the Vampire Tarot. He has also collaborated with many other decks as a member of the creative team at Los Carabio. So, yeah, I mean, I guess he wrote this book, huh? <laughs> but the artwork is amazing. So, awesome, awesome work. Okay, Anna Lazzarini, amazing. Awesome. 
okay so yeah so it i mean uh, what i would say is spend some time with this lwb right for what it's worth there's a lot to be learned from its contents don't don't just say oh it's an lwb no don't toss it aside spend some time with it it, it will work it will be worth your while and of course this lovely deck which is uh you know a uh, a uh, 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 how do you say it a mixture of all sorts of interesting energies uh, of all kinds again uh, a, a beautiful beautiful stunning imagery and artwork that's like a feast for your eyes and when you see that all the stuff that you may have complained about <laughs> kind of flies away in, in you know the artwork the awesomeness of the artwork in my opinion uh, kind of makes up for uh, the small, small things that that do bug you about this deck. But if if you put those points aside, like I said, or in, you know, while I was reviewing the deck earlier, if you put certain points aside and just use the image as the basis of, uh, you know, doing your reading, then you know, just go with that. That that always helps. The card story always, always helps. So. This was my <laughs> review of this lovely deck, the Manga Tarot by Lou Scarabio. And if you have this deck, uh, or if you want to buy this, if you have this deck, I, I, I would like to hear your thoughts on the various points that I mentioned earlier in the review. And if you want to buy this deck, I have a link uh, in the description accompanying this video. It is an Amazon associate uh, sort of link so I get a little bit of a commission if you use that link to buy your stuff. Uh, it, it won't affect uh, the price you pay uh, but I just make a little bit enough to buy <laughs> a deck or two now and then and you know just so I can keep making these lovely videos for you guys so please support me if you want if you feel like it and it's awesome if you do. <laughs> uh yep so the so if again like i said if, if you have this deck uh and if you want to share your thoughts i would love to hear them please uh leave leave a comment leave a message in the comment section below if you want to go buy this deck or if you love this deck I, I would love to hear what your thoughts are and all of that and i would absolutely love to hear from you so please if you like this video please give it a thumbs up because that that's the one way i know that you watched it that you liked it and if you uh you know if you like to kind of have your card a day reading going on and if you want to see some more images uh you know how i did how i interpret uh, these card images, uh, you know, as, as the month bears on, you can totally do that. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. The links are in the description below and you can see how I take these card images for my card a day reading and interpret them in light of the question that I've asked. Now, how, how will this day be? That's the basic question I ask. So you can totally see what how I interpret it. And, you know, hopefully that will inspire you. That will, you know, be something interesting to read. And, yep, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, you can follow me on all these social media sites. If you want a reading, you can order one. If you want to buy my book, again, the link is in the description box. I will also link my card story video now and then. Uh, up, up in the you know the top right here so you can uh, you know go back if, if you don't know how to you know use the card image to form the story you can totally go watch that video and and learn from it and yep I guess I will see you again next Thursday in my next video up until then stay good be good and play with your cards and thank you so much for watching this video love you guys See you soon. Bye for now.